What's up, YouTube? ODST General back again. Uh, this is going to be a bit more of a quiet uh, ASMR almost video. Uh, everybody else in the house is sleeping, so I'm trying to be a little bit on the quiet side. Um, anyways, guys, we have a lot of stuff to talk about for Optrace, especially on the main development side. So let's go ahead. Let's jump into it right away. Uh, so starting us off, we have Nido Vizard once again. Uh, he has continued work on Colo, that uh, wonderful vacation destination in the middle of a giant desert planet. And the vacation destination in the middle of a giant desert planet is also a giant desert. <laughs> um, but all joking aside, he's gotten a lot more stuff in there. Of course, continuing on with that wrecked look, um, adding a lot more bunkers and stuff like that to it as well. Um, that's pretty exciting, of course. With his uh, his advancements and his uh, learning from Colo, he has decided he's probably going to go back. I don't know if it's confirmed, but he's been playing around with lighting in uh, Magical, so Magical might be getting an update to it. It's lighting too, so uh, that's something to kind of keep an eye peeled for. Um, he's got a couple of uh, before and after images of that, so that's pretty exciting stuff too. Uh, moving on right away, we have uh, some stuff from Zephyr Soza. Uh, she created a demon spawn with floating heads and beady eyes. Uh, truly terrifying, a nightmare if I do say so. Uh, joking aside, uh, these are actually a new and updated version of her female model. Um, for those of you who have followed Optre or my videos for a good while, you'll have seen basically an earlier version of these that she'd worked on and ended up getting scrapped because they weren't feasible at that point. Um, however, with their new methods to scale stuff down, I think they've probably decided to go back and that's why she's doing these again. Um, she's actually got a, a model from her old version versus the new version. Uh, these are very much work in progress, as you can see, but I do have a couple videos kind of showing these things off, um, seeing some of the progress being made with them. Still pretty early on, so it'll probably be a good while before we actually see these things fully implemented, but uh, pretty neat. Now, I do believe these are being designed as civilian first in mind although i wouldn't be surprised to see unsc content following at some point in that not super distant future if these get finished um yeah so that's all i have to talk about for zephyr now the dog <laughs> this guy's trying to keep me busy this week so uh let's go ahead let's start with the pilot helmet so the pilot helmet has uh, gotten some additional work done um i don't know precisely what he's done since the last time I'm thinking probably some new textures, maybe some model updates to it. I'm not positive. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it before, though, this is obviously based off the uh, the Halo 1 version of the pilot's helmet. So pretty awesome. Really excited for this particular piece of equipment. Um, I feel like, at least for Pelican pilots, this will be a little bit more suitable than the, uh, the Halo 3 pilot helmet. And it also won't require first contact. Um, and for those of you who are fans of Opcos but don't want to actually have to download Opcos... The dog has been kind enough to work on an anime variant. I don't think that will actually get released, but rate my horses, so as I should never be sure on something like that. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's the first thing the dog has worked on. Then he's got some additional, and quite a few additional actually, uh, images of the wombat, the UAV assaults, I don't know, drone, whatever you want to call it. Um, from Halo 3 and Halo 3 ODST. Um, so, of course, this is something I'm very much excited for. This is including Extended Arsenal, Tim's side mod, but uh, his was never finished. And so I'm pretty excited to see what the Optrade team does, and obviously that just means it's, uh, you know, one less thing I have to worry about another mod for, if uh, whether or not I have it installed. Anyways, pretty cool stuff. Get to see its landing gear. Um... I guess some of its sensor suites and stuff, and he's kind of messed with the idea of doing maybe a, uh, ah, what's the system, the pylon system, in which you can switch out the various armaments on this, so it, you can switch between, like, a uh, standard, like, 30mm uh, round or whatever is going to be included on there versus, say, like, a missile pod or rocket pod, so that'd be pretty cool, too. Uh, I'm pretty excited for that. And then he's got some images of his uh, M12, that is the uh, Fanon-designed weapon he's doing. Um, so obviously this has been textured and a few other things going on with it. Um, it looks like it has a silencer on it that we're seeing there. 
and I think the standard barrels may be above the silencer. I'm not really sure what's going on there, 100% positive, but I'm thinking that's what's going on with it. Um, other than that, pretty excited for that weapon. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure. It didn't really feel Halo first, but like I said back when I first saw this, textures do make a big difference on that, so uh, definitely kind of seeing that come out here, and uh, I don't know, I guess we'll see when it comes out what that actually ends up performing like, because I do like those PDW-type weapons that just throw a million rounds a second. Um, beyond that, we do have a uh, new red, like red dot type scope. Um, we are getting a new one with the SMG that uh, Jedi Nick is uh, implementing from Forky. I think Jedi Nick is working on implementing it. It's Forky's model, so I'm not sure who's actually putting it in game. Uh, anyways, though, he is also working on a uh, red dot scope, blue dot scope, whatever you want to call it. Uh, pretty neat, but not much else to say about that particular one. And then we've got some more work on the uh, the Drake class. Actually, a lot more work. Um, so the first thing he kind of showed off was some work on uh, some engine pods for it. So, of course, uh, some independent models of those. And then we've got the actual engines mounted onto the ship, or at least a couple of them here. So that's pretty neat looking. Uh, beyond that, a little bit more exciting, I suspect, is the uh, Archer missile pods. He's got an animated door open there on screen, probably just kind of a concept for how that'll work when you actually fire the Archer missiles, if that gets implemented properly. And I'm just kind of scanning through. Uh, we've got a couple more images of the uh, Drake class here uh, that were shared onto the, uh, the news. This is a little bit more textured and detailed version of the ship. Um, probably still not a finalized version, but just a better idea of what the updated look for that currently is. And then kind of goes back to the uh, the engine bays, and we see a separated engine pod or nacelle, whatever you want to call it, um, from the UNSC ship. He says these textures aren't final for that, but uh, gives you kind of a better idea what that's going to look like separate on the outside. And uh, we get an interior look at that as well. So we get like a basic blocked out version as well as a uh, textured version. So he wants this to be an independent room on each side of the ship in which you can have ladders and put objectives and stuff in here and maybe have to capture like engine rooms or retake them from uh, borders and stuff like that. And lastly, on the official dev side, uh, and also the frigate, once again, is a new M910 point defense network turret. So um, I don't know if this is going to be a replacement for what was in game or not. But uh, pretty interesting looking weapon. These things are mean weapons based off of uh, the one we had already. So I'm kind of interested to see what this thing ends up performing like or if there's going to be a difference at all. But uh, got a lot of different shots of it. Daytime, nighttime, uh, glowing red eyes. So space wally as the dog put it. Uh, and then you get it stacked up against a infantryman to get a better idea of the scale of this thing. Um, so going back... We do have, of course, side mods as well. Um, OP AEX. I hope I said that correctly. Now I'm questioning it. Sorry, guys. I uh, I kind of recorded this all earlier, and then I went back, and I just finished watching a stream, and now I can't remember. Uh, that was a mistake on my part. So give me one second here to uh, figure out what I've got going on here. And, uh, yeah, OP AEX. I did say that right. I wanted to make sure, though. Uh, came out with a release, adding basically pylon smoke rockets, uh, impact smoke grenades for grenade launchers and a couple other things related to piloting so uh, if you're a pilot definitely worth checking out and even if you're not there might be some cool goodies in there so uh, go ahead and check that out as well while you guys are at it um, that is of course included in the mod list or it should be um, so yeah uh, into op can we go um, the ever popular side mod uh, so last week I showed off some guys in black. Uh, I wasn't sure who they were. Those were apparently freed forces um, based off of some early kind of, I, I don't want to call them insurrectionists because they weren't, um, but early military forces in the Halo universe. Uh, to counter them, we have Koslovics. Uh, they're basically fascists versus like communists is what it's kind of coming out to. Um, so this is a future version of their forces. Um, a little bit more conventional 
uh, armament, of course, using UNSC weapons still, but uh, instead of, you know, UNSC stolen gear or anything like that, they have their own custom gear, but it's a little bit more modern day grounded with regards to that. And going out and scrolling up, see if I uh, miss anything. I don't want to miss anything. Uh, we've got some colonial military administration units. Uh, so a couple CMA guys here. And uh, just Burgess basically showing off their armor, their textures, and uh, what kind of weapons you can expect them to use. So, of course, the CMA is something that eventually got disbanded and rolled into the UNSC. Um, but these guys have their own custom armor. Like I said, they're using that CH-250 helmet, so that's pretty neat stuff. And uh, we actually see some direct comparisons to those guys as well with the C... Or was it the Colonial Guard Corps? It's not CGC. I can't remember what it is. <laughs> uh, anyways, we have the uh, the Guard Corps here, and uh, these guys are going to be kind of like the CMA, except for uh, there some minor differences. Uh, the shoulder, as you can see, is a little bit different on the armor. Uh, they're going to be using a different BDU, which I think this version's already been replaced with something even more varied from the CMA. And uh, their helmets will have bands on them, kind of like what the previous versions of these guys had. So kind of that Vietnam almost look with them. So that should be pretty interesting to see. Um, I love that Vietnam look they had in the last uh, version, the 2.0. And I do believe, uh, no, that's actually uh, UNSC Army. So we've got some Army units here. It looks like they're using uh, Desert Camouflage, and we're seeing them with the uh, various helmet upgrades and stuff there as well. So that's pretty cool. And... Last, but not least, we have the Armadillo, which is the uh, LAV troop transport variant thing that uh, Burgess is working on. Um, so there's going to be a few turret versions of this, as we've talked about in previous videos. And uh, this version's got a uh, Gauss cannon on it, so that's pretty exciting. And actually, I said last but not least, but it's actually not last. There was one thing I forgot. Uh, we have the... Uh, machine gun that uh, Burgess is working on. Now this is of course like a fan design for it as well um, but it's pretty cool. Um, let me just double check on that one but I believe he's calling that one the MM25. At uh, any rate guys I am apologizing once again because like I said I'm kind of having to whisper so my audio might be a little bit low or kind of weird on this one. Um, for those of you who stuck around to the end despite that thank you for bearing with me. Um, like always guys I want to know what your favorite thing from this video was, uh, what you're looking forward to the most in the mod. And if you guys like this video, uh, keep peel to the channel if you're not already subscribed or hit that bell icon. Uh, in a couple weeks, I'm going to have an exclusive look at that uh, new Halo mod that's kind of sort of in competition, but not really with Operation Trebuchet. And I'll talk more about that, uh, like I said, probably in a couple of weeks. I'm not sure the exact date that video will come out. Um, I've been told there's a good chance I'll have some more stuff to show off to you guys because right now it's only a couple screenshots and some information. So, um, yeah, anyways, keep peeled to the channel for that, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.